This project has two RGB LEDs that randomly fade their colors. The speed of the fade for each LED is controlled by a potentiometer, and a third potentiometer controls the brightness of both LEDs. I start by making a new folder called Inputs where I'll put the knob agents. The knob agents are very simple, containing just one analog input node with its activation exposed to other agents. Once the three knob agents are created, I connect to the Arduino and start getting live data. To keep things neat, I close the knob agents because I won't need to edit them again. I make another folder that I rename Outputs and put a new agent in it which I rename RGBLED1. I add three analog outputs and select the correct pins that I have my LED plugged into. Remember, these have to be PWM enabled pins. I refresh the connection program and can now control the first LED's color by dragging the activation values. I notice that with the type of RGB LED I'm using, an activation value of 0 turns on that color and an activation of 1 turns it off. So I add a flip value node for each color output. To control the brightness of the LED, I'm going to use a suppressed activation node, which I add from the input-output folder. I need to blend the control values before they are flipped, so first I attach the suppressed activation value to each of the flip value inputs, then add a blend inputs node to act as an input for each color. I rename the inputs on the blend nodes to red, green, and blue, and make them exposed to other agents. I connect the blend nodes to the flip value nodes, and change the blend mode on the flip nodes to multiply. Now if I play with the input values, I can control the color by setting the inputs on the blend nodes, and control the brightness of the LED by changing the activation input on the suppressed activation node. Because I have two LEDs in this project, I'm going to need to make two copies of these seven nodes. Instead of having a copy of all these nodes, I'll make things cleaner by encapsulating them in a function. I cut the nodes to remove them from the agent and copy them to the clipboard. At the root of my project, I make a new folder and name it Functions. I add a new function to the folder and rename it RGB LED Control and paste the cut nodes into it. I rename the flip value output activations to red, green, and blue. Then I click on the external icon next to all the inputs and outputs that need to be exposed by the function. Finally I click the save button in the corner of the editor. I go back to the LED agent and drag a copy of the function onto the editor from the project tree and connect its outputs to the output nodes. I want other agents to be able to control all of the inputs on the function node, so I make them all exposed. Now I copy and paste all the nodes from RGB LED 1 into a new agent called RGB LED 2. I change the pins on the output nodes to the correct values, then refresh the connection program. Again, to clean up I close the open agents because I won't need to edit them anymore. I rename the default agent to Top Level Control and open it for editing. I drag RGB LED 1 onto the screen. 
I'm going to combine several nodes into a structure that fades the input activation of one color, then encapsulate them as a function and use one copy of the function for each red, green, and blue input for both LEDs. I add a timer node from the flow control menu. I change the end behavior from low to return so the timer goes from 1 and then back down to 0. I connect the finished output trigger to the input trigger so that the fade repeats. While I'm working I connect the timer's output activation to the red input so I can see what's happening in my actual Arduino. By adjusting the duration input on the timer I can control the speed of the fade. The default maximum length of the timer is 1 second. I want to be able to have a nice slow fade, so I'll change that to something bigger, like 8 seconds. To make the effect more visually appealing, every time the timer runs I want to use a random value for the duration. To do this I add a random number node from the math menu and connect it to the timer's duration input. Every time the refresh trigger fires the output is set to a new random number. I'm going to adjust the minimum to something small but not zero. I want the random number generated to refresh before the timer does. So I'm going to disconnect the link from the timer's finish trigger and connect it to the refresh input on the random number generator. The random number generator has an output trigger that fires when its value is refreshed, which I connect to the timer's input trigger. Now the timer keeps running with a random duration value on each refresh. I also want to be able to adjust the speed of the timer with one of the potentiometers. To do this I'm going to attach another activation node to the duration input to use as a gain. I add a flip value node and connect its output value to the timer's duration input and change the duration's blend mode to multiply. Now I can see that when I raise the activation of the flip value node it shrinks the duration value, speeding up the timer. If I set the value to 1, the timer duration goes down to 0. I don't want this to happen, so I add a transform value node and attach it to the flip value node. I adjust the output max value so that even with an input value of 1 there's still a visible fade happening. This group of four nodes now controls the activation of one of the inputs on the LED. I cut and paste them into a new function which I name value fader. After the paste I notice that the timer isn't running. I want the timer to start when the program starts so I add a startup trigger node and connect it to the random number generator. To finish the function I have to expose any inputs or outputs I want available outside of the function. In this case I want to be able to change the input activation on the transform number node. I'm also going to change its name to speed activation. Next I rename the timer's output value to activation and expose it. Finally I save the function. Back on the top level control agent I drag three copies of the value fader function and connect them to the red, green, and blue inputs on the LED agent. Next I drag knob 1 onto the agent and connect it to the speed activation input for all three functions. Now on my breadboard the first LED is randomly changing color and turning the knob controls the speed. I do the same for the second LED and knob. Finally, I drag the third knob onto the top level control agent and connect it to the activation of both LEDs to control their brightness, and the project is done.